YouTube, what's good? It's your boy Dima here, back with another video. And today, I'm finally bringing you guys the install on the Polestar Kythera on another episode of Let's Talk Airsoft. So if you guys didn't catch my unboxing video of this thing, um, I didn't really unbox the physical unit, but I basically went over what this is. For those of you that don't know what this is, this is a mechanical HPA system made by Polestar. This is their newest product. And I'm gonna show you guys how to install it today. On top of that, shout out to Amped Airsoft. They also sent me the Amped IGL. What this is, this replaces the macro line that comes stock with the Polestar. And you can get custom colors, custom camos. This one says for the Coltronas, you can get custom text and all that. So shout out to Amped. I'm gonna show you guys how to install the IGL with the Kythera. Now again, like I've been saying on all my recent videos, y'all gotta excuse the setup. I'm still working from home as far as quarantine is concerned, which is why y'all can see I'm big cozy out here today. But yeah, if the lighting changes and the audio is not that good, hey man, y'all just gonna have to turn your brightness up and turn your volume up, let's get it. All right, so what I'm gonna do in this video, which worked out pretty good for some of my previous videos, is I'll move the camera and everything so that way I can get kind of like a hand cam set up so you guys can see what I'm doing and how I'm installing everything so that way you guys get an idea of how to work on this stuff. But if you watched my unboxing video, you guys will know that I actually didn't physically unbox this and I did that for a reason. I wanted to show you guys what comes out of the box with the Polestar right there and what you guys can expect. Now, just so you guys understand exactly what this video even is. I'm showing you how to install the Polestar Kythera. I'm showing you guys how to install the IGL for the Kythera. And I'll also get into some trigger tuning and kind of just like show you guys exactly how the Kythera works, how you can tune your trigger, and how you can adjust it to work perfectly for you. Again, this is a completely mechanical HPA system, so no batteries necessary. Literally, you can drop this in your gun, plug it in, and you're good to go. Now, I know some of you guys are actually wondering which gun this is going in. It's gonna go in a VFC, custom VFC build that I have. I got my lower receiver right here. And as for the gearbox, it is a Retro Arms gearbox shell. Now, I'm gonna show you guys how I install my Kythera into my Retro Arms gearbox shell. My personal recommendation, and I'm pretty sure most of you guys will be dropping this into an existing gun. I would recommend that your lower receiver and your gearbox are the same brand or they match or whatever just in case just to make sure you don't run into any issues and i'm pretty sure most of you guys watching this video plan on dropping this kit into an existing gun i'm kind of building from the inside out if that makes any sense which is why i'm going with a retro arms gearbox shell but these retro arms gearbox shells are machined pretty well and i know from personal experience that they'll drop into the vfc bodies no problem. Now I did want to use this Kythera install video also to kind of show off the build that I'm doing because since the Kythera uses no batteries at all, it actually gives you more options when it comes to customization with your external builds and just certain parts that you can throw on your gun. We'll get into my gun build at the end of the video. That's really not even important right now. I know what you guys are here for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera and set up some lighting so you guys can get a hands down bird's eye view of uh, how we're gonna install this right there into my gearbox. All right guys, so I did the best I could to set this up. Hopefully everything looks good and is working, but here we have it. This is the Kythera. Again, close up of the box. Get to this unboxing right here. So when you open up your Kythera, show you guys what you get out of the box. Of course, I did already take this out of the packaging just to make sure everything was there when I got it, but I'll show you guys real quick. You get, this is the unit right here. So we got the Polestar Kythera right here. You get this bag, which has some grub screws, some washers, and a spring. I'll explain what these are for later. You get the macro line that Polestar includes. And you also got Polestar sticker. And thank you for your purchase. This links you to the instruction manual. There is no physical manual in here, as you guys can see, but this will link you to the manual. Scan the QR code. Now, I want you guys to notice something. Yes, this macro line is included, but what you guys don't see is the quick disconnect, which actually goes on the end. You do have to provide that yourself. It does not come with the packaging for Polestar. I don't think any of their systems come with that. Just a warning for you guys out there, if you pick up a Kythera and you're not planning on installing the uh, IGL like I am, uh, you will need a quick disconnect separate from just picking up the Kythera because they only include the macro line. But we actually won't be needing this. So set that aside and I will bring in the IGL. Of course, this is what we're gonna be installing in ours. And I'll show you guys a quick difference between the two. So here we have the IGL and the standard macro line. Let's just get up close and personal. You guys can see it's a lot more reinforced, obviously, with the IGL. And then this is, it's all one, one thing. I wanna note something here. See where this flex is? You don't have that point. It's a lot more reinforced right here. 
Um, so what th one thing Polestar states, and you might have to do it for this one, but uh, it's actually with the IGL and Amped made a video on this. You will need to cut your spring guide to your gearbox. I'll show you guys what I mean by that when we get to that, but just a quick heads up. All right, so before we get into any tuning with the Kite there, I'm actually just gonna show you guys how to install this real quick, how everything works, and I'm just gonna keep it super simple for right now, and then we will get into the more detailed and technical stuff a little bit later. So, for starters, you have your Kite there right here, and then you have this charging cable. One hack that I learned that I'm actually probably gonna do is you guys see kind of wild right here you know what i mean what you can do is actually slide some heat shrink over heat that up and that way these will be out of your way and you probably won't mess yourself up or cut yourself with these at all oh shit, there we go i already cut myself damn okay so i definitely recommend this mod so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the little bit of heat shrink that i cut right here my hands look crazy right now slide this over and I'm actually gonna go heat this up and I'll be right back. All right, so honestly, I didn't do the cleanest cut or cleanest job, but hey, I'm protected now. And yeah, quick little mod for you guys. So first thing you wanna make sure is these little spacers right here, you wanna make sure, wanna make sure they're sitting all the way inside here real quick. All right, you wanna make sure those are sitting in there. What you wanna keep from your existing AEG or what you're gonna want with your gearbox are the actual shell, so let your plate the safety lever right here and then your spring guide. I'll show you guys a quick little mod with the spring guide later. All right, so what you guys want to do is drop the Kythera in. The front post right here should fit within this ring. And then this post right here on the gearbox, you can see this post should fit right in this gap. So just like that, you're good. It's not moving nowhere. Then your trigger will be installed here and then you're actually going to want to route this uh, down to the grip. You can go either the front of it or the back of it now. The reason why I didn't screw in any line is I wanted to show you guys something with the spring guide real quick. So this is my retro arm spring guide. And I know what you're thinking. Why is this thing chopped? Since I have the amped IGL, when I install the IGL, it's going to stick out kind of far. And my spring guide originally with its length, let's just say if this was still together, I wouldn't have been able to close my gearbox all the way. Let me show you guys what I mean. Okay, so screwing in the IGL, if you guys wanted to, what you could do is you can add some Teflon tape here. For the sake of the video, I'm actually just gonna leave it like that. Screw this on. All right, so I got everything routed. And you guys can see, if this was still in one piece and I were to drop my spring guide right there, it would come in contact right here and I actually wouldn't even be able to close my gearbox. So what I did was I chopped it. I made sure there's still room for the threads. I just used a Dremel. You guys can use a hacksaw. Whatever the case may be, you're going to have to cut your spring guide and then this should still hold and sit like that. Now, the reason why I did that, this is a quick change spring guide. So I actually don't even need to install this right now. I can close the gearbox and then install this later. Trigger I'm using, this is an old HPA speed trigger that I just had kind of laying around so i'm actually going to use this one so just to show you guys how everything kind of works i'm actually going to move the charging handle out of the way so i can chamber this real quick you guys can also just kind of push it down on the nozzle if you wanted to but for sake of the video i wanted to show you guys what that does your trigger is actually going to come in contact with the trigger linkage right here super easy fire this will chamber fire when this is all aired up it'll work perfectly fine but Everything seems to work. Let me get that trigger back in there. Literally, all I would have to do here is close my gearbox shell. I'm not gonna screw it on just for sake of the video, but let's say my gearbox shell was closed. Make sure everything's there. That's pretty much it. Then I would actually be able to shoot the system. So yeah, that's a pretty basic, very simple install. And if you were wondering how I would get this back into my gearbox, my little trick is using the existing screw that I have from my buffer tube. Um, I would kind of use it as a placeholder, screw it in, have this set in, get everything settled in, back that screw out, screw my, my stock on and I'm good. But that would be the basic install if you guys are just wondering how to install your Kythera. What I'm gonna do now is we're gonna take this apart, get back to the system and I'll show you guys how you can get into a little bit more tuning if you want a crispy trigger pull. The way the system works is super simple. It does have a very realistic trigger mechanism. And to access that, what you're gonna to wanna to do is this pin right here. If you remove that, you can actually take out the trigger assembly. I'm just gonna use this Allen key I have. Let's see, pop this out here. So pin pops through, I should be able to wiggle this out. There we go, that comes off. I should be able to just wiggle this out of here, if I'm not mistaken. There we go, so I'll sit that down. And here we have it, the trigger assembly. I know some of you guys are looking at this like, what 
in the world is this? So right here you have your trigger link. This is the trigger spring. This right here is your sear and this is your disconnector. With the trigger spring, if you remove this, take this out, I'll show you guys. There's actually some washers sitting under that. Four washers right there. Comes out of the box like that. And in this little packaging, you're gonna get, I believe, three extra washers. And you guys see those little set screws right there? I'll show you what those are for. All right, y'all, so to keep it super simple for you guys, you have three parts. You got your trigger link right here. You have your sear. And then this dark gray part is your disconnector. Now, with those grub screws, you can adjust a few things. First of all, for the sear adjustment, uh, this actually came pre-installed right here, sear adjustment screw. Um, now, screwing this basically will adjust, uh, if it was in the kite there, it will adjust where your sear sits and comes in contact with the spool that's inside here. Um, and then the next one, you can actually install one of the smaller grub screws right here. And what that's gonna do is adjust your disconnector. Screwing it in will come in contact on the back right here, pushing your disconnector downwards and then vice versa the other way. And that actually will adjust where it comes in contact with the spool on the Katera in there. So that's sear and disconnector. And then you also get two more for your trigger. Now, I showed you guys when I took out the trigger spring, there was a stack of washers in there. You can actually install one of the longer screws right here if you want, let's say like a heavier trigger pull. You can kind of adjust where that screw comes in contact against that stack and creating more spring tension, thus making it harder to actually pull the trigger if you guys want like a, I don't know, mil sim, mil spec trigger. And then you also kind of get, I want to say post travel. Um, I don't know if that's the correct term, but that's another screw that will go right here, one of the longer ones. Basically that screw would sit right in here and you are able to adjust it through the bottom right here. And what that does is when that's installed, let's say you pull the trigger and it engages and you still have some leeway, you can actually adjust that screw to where it stops right at the brake and then it'll reset. So I'm not gonna do too much tuning because I honestly like exactly where this was sitting out of the box. I will install a couple of the screws, maybe mess with my disconnector and sear just a little bit. The trigger spring screw, I'm probably not gonna install because I felt that that was fine. Then after I adjust all of those, we'll throw in the post travel one, see where that's sitting at, see if I like how that shot breaks, then we'll reinstall this and we'll get into the install. Now, when you guys are installing any of these screws, I would highly recommend adding a little bit of Loctite so that way, you know, they don't back out during the vibration of the gun or when you're using it. So yeah, just a quick heads up. So I took some time to do a little bit of fine tuning, uh, nothing too crazy, but I think I might have an idea of how this is working out now. Basically the way the system works is you have the spool in here when this is cocked or chambered, boom. Your trigger is gonna come in contact with the trigger link back here and the shot breaks and it's fired. Now, this over travel screw right here is perfectly tuned where I like it. And just to show you guys, if I were to adjust it anymore, I won't be able to shoot. So back it out just enough to where my shot breaks and I'm good. Then I also have the disconnector screw installed right here. It's in there pretty good. Pushing back on the disconnector where it's sitting nicely. I don't have the trigger screw or trigger spring screw in here. Uh, the trigger is already light enough. I don't want to adjust any any heavier. And then for the sear adjustment. So I want to show you guys something with this. Let's say if I cock the system and I adjust this down just a little bit more. See if it still fires. Barely, right? Barely, but that's risky. See, not every single one's breaking. It's a break, there you go. Super risky, so I wanna back it out a little bit more. If this is too far down, then you'll need to do some disconnector adjustment. But where my disconnector is sitting right now, I'm actually gonna back this out, so let's see. Yeah, no, so let's chamber that. Back this out just a bit. Now I have the sear sitting right where I want it. And I actually kind of shrunk the trigger pull overall. I can actually remove a little bit on this over travel screw. And let's see where I'm sitting right now. So boom, shot breaks. Perfect. That's good for me. You guys can see the trigger link doesn't have to move a lot. And it's not as heavy as a trigger pull. Now one recommendation Polestar makes, and I actually personally make it as well. I didn't do it to mine, but where the sear and disconnector meet the spool, you can actually polish those so the release of the trigger would be a lot lighter and a lot crisper and cleaner. I actually haven't done that. What I want to do is I want to test how the stock Kythera works just the way it is and then I'll do the 
polish and see how that works also. So I can do a com quick comparison between the two. But as of right now, I think that's pretty good for my adjustments. Hopefully this wasn't too confusing for you guys. Again, this is your sear adjustment screw, your disconnector adjustment screw is right there. And then you get your over travel trigger screw right here. And then you can adjust how heavy or light your trigger is right here. I have not installed the trigger spring screw right here at all. I'm just keeping it stocked the way it came from Polestar, which is four of the washers in there. You can add or remove to your liking. I think they recommend keeping four in there. You can add three if you want a heavier one or whatnot, but I'm gonna keep it like that because I think that works perfectly fine for me. And we're gonna install this in my gun. The Carthera in right here. These are good. I'm actually gonna route mine through the front of mine right here. Now, one thing I'm curious about is how this tunable trigger will match up with the tuning that I've done on the Kythera. Got the screws back completely out again. This is an old one, so it's probably not gonna be as crispy or smooth as a brand new one, but hey, we're working with it. So with the adjustments I've made and my trigger sitting here non-adjusted, that is where the trigger link is sitting and the trigger is sitting right here. So I would have to tune my trigger to where it sits right there. And then here's a shot. Not bad. Um, I, again, this is just me kind of eyeballing it. Okay, that's not too bad. There's still a little bit of tuning I can do, but we're gonna get this installed and see how that works. All right, so with the trigger installed, you guys can see it shoots, but I can still do some trigger adjustment here. All right, guys, so I actually have the Kythera right here with air in the system. I'm gonna pull the trigger real quick, show you guys. Everything does work, it does fire. I kind of tuned the trigger a little bit. Let me show you where it's at. It's a break, reset. It's not bad, that's with the speed trigger. I could do a little more tuning. But yeah, all right guys, so picking it up while I'm installing the gearbox into my lower receiver, I did manage to get my spring guide in there. You guys really can't see it, but closing up the gearbox, I was able to get the spring guide in there. Um, and one thing I wanna show you is with these amped lines and now with this charging handle on the Kythera, for your grip, you're gonna wanna actually expand the hole here. This is an old school MacBook PTS grip I've had from like 2012. Um, and what I did was I actually enlarge this to where the grip fits right through it. But also you're gonna need to make sure that this goes through one of the vents here. So just to show you guys exactly what I'm talking about, see if I can get this on camera. This is gonna go through here. You guys are gonna wanna make sure you get that through on the grip as well. Everything should push through and boom, there you go. You will have not only the line out of it, but also the charging cord. Now, Polestar did design this to where if you guys wanted, you can mod it somehow. Uh, I've already seen, shout out to my guy, K's Garage over on Instagram. He actually routed this to work with his charging handle, which I thought added to the realism of the system and I just thought it was super dope. But just an idea for you guys. I think that was pretty sick and I wanna see how other people get creative with this. For me though, it's perfectly fine just hanging out the grip like this. And here we are guys. I successfully installed my Polestar Kythera into my gun. I uh, just have the lower receiver, obviously, because it's all I can fit in frame right now. If I plug air into the gun, it's ready to fire. If I unplug the gun, pull the trigger, gun has fired, I can't shoot it again, pull the cord. Just to do one last test while I have everything here. We are in, I'm shooting, and everything seems to be good. One thing I like about the Kythera is being that it's a completely mechanical system, I don't have to worry about an FCU or a battery or anything like that. So you guys can get creative with your builds. Um, that means I don't have to store anything in my stock. So I'm not limited on what stock I need to run. You can even run guns with no stock if you really wanted to. So yeah, if you wanted to do a build with no stock or if you wanted to drop this into, you know, something a little bit more unique or a little bit different other than an M4. I know they got the V3s, people are dropping them in AKs, MP5s and whatnot. But yeah, since you guys don't have a FCU or battery or anything like that, uh, you can get pretty creative with this. So I actually have this black retro arm selector cover, but it literally fits like right inside there. So there's no point. All right, so that kind of took me a minute. I don't know if you guys can tell, but the sun actually went down, but we got it. The build is in, the Kythera has been installed. Let me know what you guys think about this build, the way it looks. I don't know, 
I like it, but I, I can I can do a little bit of changes here and there. I know it's not really like my typical style or whatever, like this speed soft style as you guys call it, but I don't know. It's been a while since I've built something like this, very, you know, tactical and milsim if you will. So I figure with the way that the Kythera works, with the way the system works, the way this gun looks, I just feel like it all flows together very, very well. But since we have it all assembled, let's go over what I have on the gun. All right, so front to back here, this is some random, uh, I think it's a Bravo, like scar style flash hider but it came with a quick detach kind of screw on suppressor. But what I like about this is we threw foam in it. So it's kind of loud with this, especially where the inner barrel sits. This will actually make it a lot quieter, especially with this system. So I'll test it out when I get the actual shooting video of this, but that's what I have up front. This outer barrel right here is a Lancer Tactical Aluminum Collapsible Outer Barrel. The reason why I went with the collapsible one is I can get different options when it comes to this build. So as of right now, I've got some barrel extensions uh, with this flash hider where I can put a foam filled suppressor over. But if I wanted to, I could take this off, put on the Lighter S, which is an option that will actually sit inside. How did I forget? Which? <laughs> That'll actually sit inside of the Geyser Rails like that. Another option I have if I don't want to run the Lighter S is I can use the lighter BT and I have this barrel adapter. It's kind of a beat up barrel adapter, but you guys see, got the barrel adapter on. But with that one, it actually makes the lighter BT sit a little more flush. And I actually really like this look right here. So this is probably what I'll run. I actually wanna see if I can get in contact with Ace Tech to get my hands on their lighter R, which is basically a longer version of this that shoots red and green BBs but it doesn't have the Bluetooth chrono feature of this one right here. All right, and onto the barrel setup in here, you guys can see the spring is kind of messed up. I've had this laying around for a while. It's a max model hop-up unit with a Prometheus purple bugging, Promi barrel, and I honestly think that might be a maple leaf nub in there. I'm not too sure, but yeah, this is the barrel setup I've had for a cool minute in this gun, and it seemed to shoot perfectly fine when I was using it, so we'll test and see how it works with the Kythera. Then all of these accessories are sitting on, I want to say Ditac makes this as well. This is a Replica Geisley rail. It's got the trademarks on it and everything. Now I actually did not buy this rail. I think it might be somewhere on Evic, but uh, shout out to my guy Ian, man. He actually hooked it up with this rail. Then I've got all Bravo and Night Evolution accessories going on right here. We got the Mini Scout, same one I have on my F2. And we also have the PEC box right here. A dual switch to control both of those to show you guys what they do. One's a light, other one's a green laser. I can also switch that up if I wanted to use a red laser or white light on the PEC. Moving on down here, this is a real Magpul MVG just to match the rest of my Magpul furniture. Keeping the Magpul vibes going with my sling mount right here. My favorite optic in the game, this is the G&G GT1. Obviously, VFC on the upper and lower receivers. Mag release, this is a GMP ambidextrous mag release. Back here, this is a replica Magpul ASAP plate. This thing was super, super, super cheap. I was gonna go with the real one, but I mean, this thing was super cheap, so I had to go with this. And then we have the stock and the grip, which mean a lot to me. So these are old school PTS Magpul licensed. For those of you that have been playing Airsoft for a long time, you guys know that back in the day, what is this, like 2010, 2012, I'd say? Um, maybe, maybe between those years. Um, PTS actually had the Magpul license, so everything was completely Magpul'd out. We had Magpul and then we had Magpul PTS. I remember everyone had Magpul builds back in the day, including me. So I had to bring that flavor into this build. These are from then, they're hella old. I actually had the flip up rear sight and tan on this originally, but it was so old that it crumbled. I know this newer generation of Airsofters doesn't care about trademarks or any of the old school nostalgia shit or if your shit's real or not. But just to show you guys, we got the Magpul Industries right there and you know it was the old school PTS stuff. We had the PTS trades also here on the grip too, Magpul PTS right there. If you guys are wondering about the mags this is airsoft gateways um murder mag that's what these are murder mags unfortunately i could not get my hands on any old school pts p mags that really would have completed the whole build have the old school pts furniture with the old school p mag would have been fire but the murder mag works for now i actually do want to get my hands on some of the new epm ones from pts uh just to slap in here i don't have any of those in general so pts what up but yeah that completes the kythera build and install this is it right here. Being that I am quarantined, I can't really get you guys a proper chrono test or really display how the gun shoots properly or at least how I want to. So what I'll do is I'll actually save that all for another video. When I do get out to the field, I'm just gonna run it how I set it up right now, see how that works, see how I like that, and then I'll probably do the polishing and a little bit more fine tuning, show you guys a video of that, and then also show the difference in gameplay and performance 
after those mods have been done. But as of right now, that's the install, that's the breakdown, that's the build introduction. I really don't know what else to cover. So what I'll do right now is while I got some daylight, I'll take this outside, get a few test shots in. Hopefully I don't scare my neighbors. Then that will wrap up this video. Hopefully you guys learned something and it wasn't too confusing. I just want to thank you all for tuning in. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys are planning on picking up a Kytheria, if you're intrigued or interested by this at all what you guys think about mechanical hpa systems and if you're not feeling the kythera also let me know why down below thank you again to polar star and shout out to amped airsoft you guys have shown nothing but love installing this kythera means that i gotta get out and go play now and test this thing that way i can really bring you guys some proper feedback and shooting results and also some gameplay but yeah i think that wraps up this video man now i just gotta figure out a complete loadout with this gun i have not forgot that you guys want those loadout videos but that's for another time Peace. All right, you guys are gonna have to excuse the mess in the backyard, but we got the Kythera right here. And I got a box down there. I'm just gonna shoot at it. So I'm gonna shoot at it unsuppressed. And then I also have the mock suppressor. Now, the reason why I said I can't do a chrono test is because I only have two fives. And at the moment, my ASEC Lighter BT is actually not functioning properly. I don't know why. It doesn't really seem to charge, so I can't get a proper chrono reading for you guys. But hey, we'll just shoot. Sorry about the wind. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the first shot should be a dry fire. Low key loud. That's loud. Hold on, let's put the suppressor on. I think that makes a difference. It's way quieter. It's so loud without this. I might change my inner barrel, yo. What the heck? Nah, that's too loud. Nah, bro. I might have to make some tweaks to that. That's kind of loud. <laughs>